Greetings, hello, and welcome back. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Imperial Jedi, time for episode number three, and we're going to pick up right where we last left off. Now, our goal for this episode is to add on some new neighborhoods, grow the population, and we want to make it to a population of 2,600 so we can start working on our, uh, our highways. So that's kind of what we're going to be doing for this. And I was taking a look at the foothills here. They're actually not as steep as I was originally thinking. So I think as far as neighborhood construction goes, let's try maybe doing a curved road and a little network up through through here. And we'll start zoning as we go and uh, hopefully unlock some more milestones and we'll talk about those. And if time permits, we can either start the uh, highway construction or maybe put that off for the next episode. We'll kind of see how it goes. But let's just jump in and see what we can uh, accomplish here. All right, so I've got our road guidelines, that kind of stuff, everything's still kind of switched on. So that's gonna help a lot with us doing this little uh, layout right here, but I want something that's in line with this. And I wanna go up into the hill here and maybe have a little gentle curve off to the left. Maybe straighten out just a bit. And then we'll just kind of bank around off to the right again. Kind of a cool use of the space. We're kind of going, I think, a little bit with the uh, terrain as well. We're not trying to go at this like totally vertically. It'll be, it'll be a bit too steep. And I want a little neighborhood just in here. But I want people to stick to the avenue. So let's do some junction control. Let's go a hint higher with this, bring that over. And what I'm gonna do, because our budget's a little bit low right now, uh, I'm gonna put on three speed. I'm gonna go ahead and zone in here as we're as we're building. We'll bring in some water and stuff, and uh, that'll help us get some get some money. And really, like our highway reconstruction, that's gonna be pretty pretty expensive. So we're gonna to want to start saving for that now. But for us to continue going this far up, we're gonna to want to probably drop down some more services because we're getting farther and farther away from our schools and, and like fire coverage and stuff. But if we're only bringing one road in, that's not all that efficient. So what we're gonna want is more people taking advantage of the services up here, especially because services are very expensive. So what we'll do is probably a little um, uh, side road that just follows the same kind of contour or profile. Oh, cool. Let me just go ahead and put that down before I forget. Then let's go over what we unlocked. So let's go ahead and pause it. Um, landscaping. So I probably won't do too much landscaping in the beginning because it's very expensive, but we can maybe, you know, flatten this little bit out here and possibly along the highways make things a little bit more even. You can see this is kind of a little little wavy davy. But yeah, landscaping, it is expensive. I know that on the Xbox version, you guys don't even have it, unfortunately, so I will, as much as possible, try not to use too much of it, but I will definitely talk about it so you guys have a bit of the basics. You can go over some of that right now. So with the landscaping, you're going to want to either adjust your brush strength to uh, low, medium, or high, depending on what you're trying to accomplish. you got your sizes too, just like your district tool. you got a tiny one, medium size, larger one. But again, very, very expensive. So in the beginning, just you got to budget for it. And um, as far as these guys are concerned, the shift con uh, the shift terrain, sorry, um, if you left click, that'll bring terrain upwards. If you right click, that'll start to uh, you know dig a little hole. Uh, this one right here, the level terrain, um, this is kind of cool because it helps you create like plateaus and mesas when you're doing, you can even see with the with the thumbnail, it just helps you kind of uh, accomplish that. And with the softened terrain, that would get rid of the contour lines, it will help blend them all. So instead of your mountain looking like that, it'll look like that after. And then this one right here is really great if you're trying to do large areas uh, as flat as possible. So even on like any size, when you right click, it'll set the terrain height. And then when you click and drag with the left click, it'll just flat everything out to that height. But I'll go over all this, um, you know, a little bit more when we're using it and stuff, but that's just your basic overview. You have to worry about soil. So obviously the more you dig up, the more you'll end up with. Uh, the more you start putting down, you'll run out. So if you have access to a water source, underwater is a great way to kind of store your soil, dig up some more if you need to, or just cut away little parts of mountains here and there if you're looking for, for that. And I think there's a mod now where you can have unlimited soil. Uh, like like built right into the game, I mean. Get that uh, through the uh, content manager of your main menu. Okay. Um, now, event policies. This is relating to football. And the football, uh, same with a few of these other um, uh, policies here. These are related to the Match Day DLC, which is a free DLC. Highly recommend you get it. So if you go to the Steam store, type in Match Day, it'll come up. 
it's free, but you still got to enter it into your cart and you got to like buy it in air quotes, even though it won't cost you a single cent. Don't even worry one bit. And then uh, it'll download the uh, stadium for you and it'll pop up in your game. And the stadium is really fun because you can set like the team name, the team colors, and you'll get like loyal fans. They'll cross, you know, they'll go across city. They'll wear their like jersey colors and they'll pay ticket money to get in. So your city can get a little bit of a boost. You got to maybe put down some more police just to take care of the crime and stuff. But it's kind of a fun new mechanic for the game. And there's a paid aspect to the DLC as well, and that'll give you copies of real-life football stadiums. So I think it's just the four, but still pretty cool. So some of the big names here. And the same idea, these would act like, you know, just like a stadium or whatever. So pick and choose whichever one you want type thing. Put them all down if you want to. That's kind of fun. But they're a little bit expensive, so we probably won't be doing those just yet, but we'll, uh, we'll definitely drop a stadium down eventually. Okay, so I guess, you know, some more policies we unlocked. Nothing really too crazy we gotta worry about though. Uh, the fun stuff is definitely parks. We now have some level two buildings. So we'll see some bigger buildings kind of kind of show up here. We now have access to our um, pathways. If you have after dark, you can now start doing bicycle paths. And if you've got mass transit, you can use your canals eventually for uh, shipping lanes. If you want to have say like ferries and, and like passenger terminals and like that kind of stuff. So, you know, you can start planning those in your city already if you want to, but a little bit expensive. And of course you need access to a waterway. But you can use your canals as kind of like a little emergency flood water uh, kind of system. Or if you wanted to, you could use these um, as kind of like a sewage water outflow. So it's kind of gross, sort of, but you can have like a little river, a canal system that just kind of gets the sewage out a little bit uh, further away from the city if you want to. Um, and then I think the only service we unlock that we're going to have to worry about placing right away are the high schools. So there's some new parks. Uh, some of these you might not have because I've got, you know, the deluxe DLC and a few other crazy things. So I think the Botanical Gardens, Basketball Court, I think the Bouncy Castle maybe. Uh, this stuff comes with the deluxe DLC. The Japanese Garden, I believe you get that if you um, uh, enter your email address into, um, into the game to share with Paradox or whatever. Freshwater Outflow Pipe, that comes from the Natural Disasters DLC. This is super cool because you can have like your own water source basically. So if you want to have like a lake uh, or a waterfall or something, you can go ahead and create that now by using this. And the Biodome and the Vertical Farm, those are from the high-tech uh, building DLC. In case you can't tell, I'm a little bit of a fanboy. I think I get every every DLC, everything they kind of produce. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and place down our high school. And what we could do is maybe put that in through here. And we can drop down a park. I think we're maybe saving that spot for some parks and some high density. But yeah, we can make a park in here, stretch out some of the park pathways, make it seem like the park is kind of oversized and custom. And I'll show you guys kind of a nifty little trick too, which you're totally willing to use. And if you don't like it, don't even worry type thing. But I've had a few people ask me if it's possible to do a uh, kind of like a cul-de-sac in this game. And the short answer is kind of. It's a lot easier when you're using some mods and get some more road types. But just for a really basic one, what we can do is we'll just take our regular road come out just to say, you know, a little bit, switch over to our avenue. And I'm going to try and just literally draw this as tiny as possible. So just the littlest amount. And then I'm going to switch over to a dirt road. And I'm just going to do one little click like that. And you end up with this little thing, the dirt road, kind of necessary, unfortunately, but you're able to zone off of it. And if we tie this in with a park, it should look kind of cool. So just from overhead, it looks like we have a little cul-de-sac right here. And then if we were to put, say, a park in here, uh, unfortunately we can't afford the big park. Uh, let's go ahead and place down the small one right here. And then if we go over to our pathways, click on the dirt ones, we can click on the anchor points from the, from the uh, park asset, and we can extend those pathways that we wanted to. Sometimes not all of them, but you can see if we go on a slight angle, we can get it. And so we'll make it seem like it kind of ties in with this. Not so bad. Yeah, so this way we're getting the added bonus and benefit of a park, because the parks will help with land value, and you'll need high uh, high land value to justify having, you know, like raised your taxes. And if you want to get um, eventually the taller buildings, um, I want to say skyscrapers, but like the equivalent, right? You'll need high land value throughout the city. I'm gonna turn this off. Let's get right. And then the last thing we're going to do 
is we'll use the same uh, trees that are being used in this park asset. And if we place those down, it'll make it seem like this is, yeah, just one giant mega park, which is kind of fun. And so we're unfortunately losing a few houses, but a sacrifice that I'm willing to make in the name of nature. And if we wanted to, we could switch some of these over to commercial. So we have like, you know, some coffee shops and stuff in and around our park area here. And at the risk of going overkill, I think we're all right now. Okay, so I'm going to switch over to uh, the trees. I already got that one selected. And we'll just go ahead and just drop these down. And I'm going to try and follow more or less the same style of concentration, just so it looks like it's all part of the same, same quadrant here. And let's just put in a couple coffee shops slash just commercial assets right here. Maybe leave that open even. Same with that part. Yeah, that's kind of cool. So I'll put it back on to three speed. Hopefully watch this populate. And I remember in the first episode I was saying I switched it over to a boreal theme. I want to go ahead and uh, take advantage of that. So I'm going to place down some of these uh, oversized pine trees, which I think look really, really, really sharp. I like this asset a lot. And these ones you only get on the boreal maps, and there's uh, three different uh, sizes. You can get some tiny pines too. And if we kind of stick to this theme throughout the whole city, keep dropping down you know, the boreals, that kind of stuff, it'll just look really cool, I think, over overall. And that's, I think, a lot more fun now, right, than what that uh, open spot looked like before. And the cul-de-sac, totally up to you guys. If you don't like it, don't even worry one bit. If it's not for you, I totally get it. It is a little bit tricky, though, to sometimes do just some like basic things you would expect to, uh, to find in this game. All right, so let's continue our expansion up here so we can get some more taxpayers, get some more money. Because all these new services were expensive, but this is cool. I like this. Take a look at that. There's our high school. There's our park system. That's yeah, kind of fun. And then what we could do is replace one of these little houses here with like an apartment building eventually. And I think that would look kind of kind of cool too. All right, now as far as a back road goes through here, I think what I'm after is something that just follows the same kind of contour lines, but doesn't take away from any of the zoning squares. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and line them up with the pillars. Or when I say pillars, I mean the anchor points. So we're gonna have straight road where the straight road is. And I'm gonna try and just curve in between. And we'll do the same thing uh, when we bring the one-way roads up as well. And we can have this, I think, going the whole way down if we want to. And I think we're at a point now where we don't have to worry about those power lines anymore, so we can start getting rid of those. Great, and all we need to do is just link these up in a few different spots to get some cars going from the avenue over to here. And we'll just put in our regular junction controls. So why don't we go down to here. Great. There's one connection. Go across. Oh, it doesn't quite line up, so we'll not do that. We could do this, and we'll change this one around so it's faster, faster flow through. And why don't we have one of those? So let's go ahead and zone. We'll put some commercial at the top as well. We'll drop down some more services, but we'll have to save up for those. But we are on three speeds, so our money should really start to uh, accumulate really quickly here. I believe we're... nope. Okay, junction controls. So a stop sign there, perfect. Stop sign here. And this gives us something to do while we're waiting for the money to accumulate as well. So that's a good way, I think, to kind of keep up with uh, with everything. 
And then uh, I was saying I wanted something fun for this. So we'll put a stop sign just here and here. And that keeps the avenue flowing faster. And it cuts people, uh, or cuts uh, through traffic down on, on this thing. That one can stay the traffic like, so it might be a bit uh, busier. Cool. Works for me. We probably need one more little street going through here. Perfect. Alright, so let's go a bit further with this. Let's get a hint more zoning done. And you can see we're doing the same kind of idea. We're just following the curve line. We're stopping at the same anchor point. If you're having a bit of trouble doing that, just go from anchor point to anchor point to anchor point. Just make like four, four segments there. And if it's not 100%, don't even worry one bit. Sometimes it's a little bit tricky, especially with the terrain. A little bit of shopping up here. Okay, so we've got a lot more demand now for industry. So this will help a lot with our finances too. Let's go ahead and craft just a little bit more of an expansion to our industrial zone. I'm gonna just do a quick little pause here because we just severed our connection to our power, but these will zone very, very quickly, so we'll get it right back. A split second. And like I was saying in the last episode, early on you can pretty much get away with zoning anything and people will pretty much build, but you do want to just try and keep, uh, keep an eye on the RCI demand. And when I say zone anything, I mean as long as it's like balanced. So if you're zoning like commercial, residential, and industrial together, you don't have to worry about you know keeping up 100% with it. As long as you're given you know giving people options here. Okay, so let's bring the one ways up. Are we starting to run out a little bit on power, or is that just? Oh, actually, we are. So uh, I think we're going to buy another coal power plant. We might maybe be able to do that little trick right now where we pay back part of the loan and uh, take it back. Yep, so we can do that. Don't be afraid to do that often, guys. So like I said, it's a fine balancing act in the beginning here. You gotta make sure you're you're moving pretty quickly and staying on top of things. So we'll keep our power plants together just so they're easy to keep track of. And we weren't running into any problems with the coal delivery, so I think we're in a good spot for that. So that is fine. Gives us some room to expand in terms of power. Some demand right now for commercial. Just wanted to do a little bit more commercial space. I'm gonna go down. I think we might be able to get rid of these power lines now. Nope, not quite. Okay, um, let's bring up the one-way roads, which will help with our service delivery, and then we'll drop down some more uh, service vehicles there at the top. And our population very, very close to the next milestone. But I think just given the the time, what we'll do for the next episode is we'll just dedicate that entire episode to um, highway stuff. So we'll rebuild the highway interchange, and I'm fairly certain that we're going to do a partial cloverleaf system with that. Pretty common with, uh, with North America. But they work uh, quite well. In this game, a bit of a sense of humor sometimes with the... Uh, with the buttons. So if you notice when you're uh, pressing B for bulldoze, it's bringing you underground. Just make sure you're pressing this button here to uh, toggle. I find that since mass transit came out, uh, I've noticed that happening It'll just randomly here and there. Oh, cool, Bloomtown. Uh, let's just go ahead and pause it. 
And I think what I'm going to do is have the one-way roads just go like that for the moment. And we'll possibly need maybe a roundabout or something, or we'll just change the flow slightly when um, we buy another tile over here. Okay, let's make that look a little bit more, a little bit nicer. And we'll just space the intersections out a bit just to help with the traffic flow. But we're building this with the anticipation of changing it later. And I do want faster traffic flow through here. These intersections are going to be way, 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 like they're way too close together. It's going to be a problem in the long run, I should say. So why don't we cut this back? Pause for a split second here. So I wanted to keep it on pause anyway because of our new services. There we go. And then to help with highway on and off, but to cut back on keeping this as a flow through, we'll put stop signs here. Great. All right, before I press play, let's go over what we unlocked here. Okay, so we can now buy our next uh, tile, I think we'll probably buy this one, and then we'll probably start heading, I think, left, and then we'll buy these two next, and that'll get us to uh, to the waterway, which will look pretty cool. And um, yeah, it'd be kind of fun to, to build a seaport. But I'm getting way ahead of myself, so let's uh, look at what else we got here. So we got some transit uh, unlocked. We can now start putting down buses, uh, trams, if you've got them. The trams are part of the Snowfall DLC, and taxis, I believe, are part of After Dark. And the ferries, of course, are with mass transit. So the ferries you can use in conjunction with the um, uh, canals, if you have started placing some of those. You can also have your ferries come up through these narrow rivers if they're just like just wide enough. But we'll go over all that later, no worries at all. We can now specialize in ore, so we can start mining some coal for the city, so we don't have to worry about trucks coming in. So we can start setting up some specialized industrial zones. I normally do that once I kind of have like the general layout of the city just kind of, you know, in my mind done. because. I don't want to have to keep relocating our industry, right? Um, these things here, the uh, heating and stuff, uh, more so to do with snowy maps, but you can definitely use them here if you're wanting to save on some electricity. The idea is you provide um, hot water um, from the city so that the houses don't have to have um, like boilers or whatever. And uh, the main thing that we're after is more roads and highways. That's the, that's the uh, fun thing right here. These are hot water pipes. Um, the only service that we have to place right now, uh, that if we don't, we'll run into problems, is uh, death care. So we now have cemeteries. Otherwise, everything else is kind of a little bit of a bonus. And so emergency shelters, if you're using uh, natural disasters, your trams, if you're obviously going to be doing trams, bus depot, and that kind of stuff. But yeah, so let's go ahead and place down the cemetery. It's the only service we need to, uh, to worry about. And I think we're going to uh, wrap things up after that. So I want this to tie in kind of nicely with maybe a pre-existing neighborhood. We got a little bit of space here. And just like the uh, landfills, when you place a cemetery, it is landlocked until you unlock the uh, crematoriums. And it's a little bit morbid, but you empty the cemetery with the crematorium. So I think you guys can kind of connect the dots as to what's happening there. So game's kind of, I don't want to say funny in that sense, but the crematoriums, we unlock those at 17,000. Um, I want to say it's a little bit less stressful to try and rush to that than it is with the landfills, because I don't think a city full of graveyards looks all that, you know, unpleasant. And as an added bonus, these actually do a bit of a boost to the um, land value. People kind of treat them like parks, because it's kind of a nice thing being able to go, you know, visit your loved ones and that kind of stuff. So when we press play, um, I was like, we would have seen people, um, I thought, um, look happier with this, but I think that's still, still doing that. Um, anyway, yeah, so we'll wrap things up here, guys. And uh, in the next episode, what we'll do is we'll start by just reconstructing the highway. And if we have any, have any time after that, then we can do a bit of an um, uh, expansion to our, our neighborhoods. But yeah, that's pretty, I like this. We're, uh, we're getting there. And I like our expansion in the hills here. I think we're using the space efficiently. It's not too steep. It's going to look really cool when it's all, uh, all filled out. All right, well, I'll see you in the next one, guys. Drop me a comment. Let me know what you think. And if uh, you have any problems or anything, definitely keep the comments coming in that sense. I uh, love helping with the uh, traffic and, and all that. And uh, yeah, I look forward, to, uh, look forward to reading them. All right, guys. All the best. Happy building. See you again.